All right, three, two, one, go. What is up and welcome back to the Daily Traders Podcast. Today we're here live at the FX Summit. I'm your host, Mark. This is my co-host, Jack. And today we have a very special guest, Tori Trades. Tori is one of the very few female traders in the industry. She's been trading for eight years. Tori, it's good to have you. Thank you so much for having me, guys. Yeah, so tell the audience a bit about yourself if they don't know you. Uh, know you. How did you originally get into trading? I got into trading uh, eight years ago. My uncle taught me how to trade. And I mean, I had a mentor, so it's it's very different. Like people being in the industry and trying to like do trial and error, learn it themselves. Mm -hmm. I understand that I'm incredibly privileged and like grateful to be able to have a mentor. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got into trading. My uncle taught me. Sorry, I feel like I got to say it twice there back and forth, guys. <laughs> You're lucky. My uncle traded full time, but wouldn't tell me a thing. Oh shit! Yeah, I really? remember he yeah. came up. Funny side story. He came up to your office one time, and I'm trying to ask him about like his strategy <laughs> or our office because I was trading with you at that point. And you like wouldn't tell us. Oh my god, <laughs> like, interesting. So your Damn. uncle, yeah, your uncle is kind enough to teach you. Absolutely, yeah. very much so. <laughs> and what was your learning curve like? I mean, obviously traders, you know, go through trial and error. Sometimes it could take three years to become profitable. Yeah. What did that look like for you? For me, the struggle was, and I think it goes with a lot of people that are given stuff. So like, I didn't pay to learn how to trade. I didn't seek it out myself. I was given this opportunity, so I didn't take it as seriously at first. Mm -hmm. I was, I wasn't as disciplined. It took me maybe like three years just to like finally be like, okay, you know what? I learned how to do this, but now I need to actually take it seriously. Yeah. Because it's like when you're given anything, it's just like, I don't know. You don't utilize it to the best of your ability, and like anyone with trading also, like if they perfect example would be like family. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to teach my sisters how to trade. They don't give two shits. Not even they're not even remotely interested. Really? Okay. Yeah. No. But like. If they were to be curious about trading and actually want to learn how, then it would work. Then yeah. I'd be able to offer so much value. But since they're not into it, like I can't, I just can't make it work. So you kind of had that switch of a flip of a switch, and you all of a sudden, like, what? Why were you all of a sudden interested? Like you trade for three years and then, or learn for three years and then you decide, like, I really need to commit to this? Yeah, yeah. So I would say what helps is my uncle is very transparent about his trading, and he will send me text messages and screenshots and be like, look, I just made a 75K trade. Wow. And that sparks so much freaking like fury, but in the best way, I'm like, yeah. oh my God, I could be there. Yeah. I could do that. And like, he's very encouraging. He's like, whenever he first started teaching me how to trade, he was like the most encouraging. He's like, you're going to be the best. You're going to be better than me one day. And I'm like, shit, why didn't I like see all that then? Why did it take me like three years to actually take it seriously wow. just to like flip that switch? So I would just say it's mostly seeing his progress and see his like growth even in the short amount of time that he had traded or taught me how to trade I feel like we're fumbling our words we had lunch we're getting close to the end of the day we're trying to make it work but essentially yes that, that, that's, that's I hope awesome. I answered that question so you think it's important then for people to find a mentor to learn yeah. to kind of speed up that learning oh curve? absolutely the trial and error of you trying to figure this out it could be a black hole it could be an endless black hole if you go on YouTube and try to learn how to trade you're probably going to be stuck in that black hole for like years. Mm -hmm. I mean, I got to ask though, how did you guys learn? Sorry? How did you guys learn how to trade? YouTube. Yeah? <laughs> okay then, YouTube so you know. Black. I, I you know. A, I bought a few courses. Um, okay, okay. Trial and error. Yeah. Like, journaling was like my biggest kind of divergence where I started to like actually improve. Like I just had all this knowledge and I wasn't like, I wasn't strategically applying it. And I okay. think journaling was what helped me to kind of like lay it all out. Actually, like, format a strategy and have like an edge. Okay, um, okay. But yeah, YouTube. Was Damn, all right, then you guys know. It's, yeah. it's hella tricky. And so part of what you do is you stream live, right? Mm -hmm. And you trade, you teach people. Do you think you've learned through teaching people? Like, do you think you've become a better trader through teaching people? Um, I gotta be honest with you, I don't think it's changed much okay. in my trading. But now putting like my myself on social media and knowing that I have people watching me now has absolutely mm -hmm. changed, I think. Mm -hmm. So not necessarily the teaching aspect, but putting myself out there in front of like this big audience yeah. has changed. Now I'm very self-aware like of just, you know, what I talk about, my, my psychology. Even when I place a trade, like every trade that I place, I feel like is going to be watched. So like, it's mm -hmm. just like, I'm like, okay, there's people like, counting on me, you know, expecting me to post and talk about this trade. So like, before, I would just place trades and be like, it is what it is. If this thing doesn't work out or if I get out at the wrong time or, you know, close the profit too early or... You don't think that's, like, harmed yourself, like, from a psychological aspect? I think it's got, like, the pros and cons for sure. At first, it absolutely harmed everything. Mm -hmm. I was placing trades just for content. Yeah. So, like, it was awful. There was yeah. definitely a, a part where that was not beneficial whatsoever. But mm -hmm. to be able to turn around and use it for, like, fuel and be like, okay, 
I need to hold myself accountable. People are watching me on this trade, like things like that. Yeah. Tell us a bit about your trading style. Trading style is trend lines and support and resistance. Okay. And um, when I first started talking about my strategy, I got so much pushback. Like, so much pushback. Well, just, sorry to interrupt, but did you pretty much go out and exactly copy what your uncle was doing? Oh, or no. So he taught me exactly that. Yeah. So it, just trend lines and support resistance is what he uses. And he was like, and he made it very clear. He was like, listen, there are thousands of strategies out there. There's indicators that you can use. There's news that you can look up. He's like, but I want you to just apply this. Just, I've done the, you know, 20, 30 years of trading. I got to already experiment with all of the other strategies. And I'm telling you, just use this. So that's exactly what I did. Yeah, and you still use it today? Still use it today. Are Even you, that eight years, two are, lines. So are you teaching any of that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so you pretty, how, how does your uncle feel about that? Um, Is he like, come on, you're giving away like the secret no, family oddly, sauce. No, oddly <laughs> no. So he's tried to teach like everyone in our family, friends too. Yeah. And he's been able to see that like many people just don't get it or they just don't, it just doesn't click. So like, yeah. for example, I had a cousin that, um, He's very like analytical. He went to school for like accounting and he wanted A plus B equals C every time. Like he just, I don't think he operates with probabilities, but he tried so hard to make it work. And like he was just yet another part of the family or another person or another friend that just couldn't, they couldn't get past it. Like they couldn't see through it. Yeah. So. This sounds like some family drama. Are you guys like at Thanksgiving? Like oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, but it's so funny that I'm like, I'm the only one in the family. He's tried to teach everyone, everyone. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. got sons and daughters and nieces and nephews and friends. And like, I'm, it's wild. I'm the only one that's actually making yeah. it work. Wow. I just want to quickly interrupt to thank this episode's sponsor, thedailytraders.com. Now, if you're interested in learning how to trade in the stock market, I put together a curriculum of videos covering my entire trading system and will also be giving you access to see my exact trades in the stock market, my entries and my exits. So I'm either making money or losing money and you're able to essentially follow along and copy my trades if you so desire. If that's of interest, click the first link in the description below, hit the apply now button, fill out that short application and if qualified, someone from my team will be reaching out. All right, on with the episode. Mark, I don't think I've ever asked you this and Tori, I'm curious too, what like initially because you guys didn't really look, I mean, obviously now like social media, it's an income source, correct? So like, but was that how you looked at it from the beginning? Were you like, okay, I'm gonna get into social media and I'm gonna turn into this and that, was it that preemptive? Or were you kind of like, I'm just gonna, I'm passionate about trading. I don't really see many like girls getting, like, getting into this. I wanna be like a figure in the space. What was your, I want you to answer this too. Like, what was your motivation behind that? You wanna go first? You got it. <laughs> okay. Um, when I first got into, so I've always been into social media. So yeah. before even trading, I was posting about cycling. I was trying to be a professional athlete. And I about was what? A professional. Oh, trading, cycling, yep. cycling, brain work. Come on. <laughs> I was caffeine. <laughs> I was posting about um, cycling. So I was a sponsored athlete, and like I tried to make that work. So mountain I tried to biking be like, or road biking? Road biking. Okay. And actually, to be even more specific, it was like fixed gear. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it was like criteriums to where I would just. Okay. We can talk about, I was a big mountain biker, but oh, anyways. Yeah? Yeah. Oh damn. Very cool. Very cool. So as far as posting about it, I never saw what benefits I would get from, you know, having a, a following on social media. Yeah. But I absolutely like go back into some, so I'm like big on journaling, like actually journaling though. Yeah. Although trading journaling is excellent, but yeah. like actually journaling. And yeah. I go back and like see some of the things that I was writing. I'm like, okay, I years ago, years ago, I even had like a motto or a, um, like a, what do you call it when like it's a company's, like what does the company represent? Your slogan. Yeah, yeah, something yeah. like that. And it oh, was like- Oh, your mission statement. My mission statement, yeah. yes. I had mission statements like years ago before I even before I even started posting about trading. And it was like, yeah. I'm going to get more women into trading. So like oh. that's always been the goal. That's and cool. I, I'm trying to, what's cool is I can't curate my content to get more women in it, but I can at least be me. Mm -hmm. And that alone in itself is working. So yeah. that's like the best way to do it. Well, I think acting as that figure, just like you saw your uncle, and you needed that kind of like personal connection. Hey, this person can do it. This person in my family, my blood can do it. Maybe I can do it. So I yeah. think for a lot of girls, I mean, please give me feedback on this. It's like, they probably see you and like, oh, here's this industry that's like very male dominant. Right. And here's this girl who's like absolutely killing it. Maybe I could do this. Yeah, yeah. I'm curious, like, have you had girls reaching out to you like say like Tori? Oh my like, God, yes. Yeah. And it's been so freaking cool. And what's even cooler. So I've, I've started mentoring and I, so like one-on-one -on -one stuff and I've had, multiple like females that are want to get into trading yeah and one of them her name is valentina and she's actually oh my god i have to freaking text her shout out valentina yes valentina sorry dude i totally forgot to text you my bad um but i'm gonna text you and we're gonna hang out 
but she's here in Miami, and she's oh. one of my best freaking students. Oh, hell yeah. And, like, oh. how freaking cool That's is that? Awesome. That, like, women can just, they can grasp what I'm saying. It doesn't seem intimidating. And to be totally honest, mm. it's, like, a, it's a freaking easy strategy. I mean, I mean, you guys know how trend lines work. It's it's pretty straightforward, pun yeah. intended. But it's it's very easy. So it was an easy concept to grasp, and, like, relatability's there, um, psychology. I can, I can tell her all the things that I've gone through, like, self-doubt and, you know, over revenge trading over trading i mean the whole nine yards attaching your worth to like your trades like if you didn't do well on the market you felt like you were a shitty human being like yeah. working through all of those emotions so I, I just give that relatability i think for the women out there that's awesome cool so all right now your turn i mean i honestly i just posted a couple of videos on tiktok because it was just i was trading and it was something i enjoyed and i i thought other people might enjoy it too and kind of just blew up people <laughs> by accident people like create a discord and uh and then it kind of went from there but yeah it was totally by accident i never thought i'd be in the spot right now hell yeah yeah so yeah it's fun and i think i've learned and grown as a trader so much through helping people like i was saying uh there is that added level of pressure and stress yeah um when you're putting yourself out there like you do live and i'm posting my trades as well and i think that's just it's, it's helping me grow as, as a person, as a trader, and I don't know, it's just a group accountability thing. True. You can have that self-accountability, but you can also like totally ignore everything you're telling yourself. But when you have other people watching you, there's no like hiding that. Exactly, yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's cool. It's a cool space to be in, and even being here today, like having an, an audience, people walking around, shooting this it's live. It's pretty, pretty cool. It's really cool. <laughs> so um, let's kind of talk about, I want to touch on risk management, trading psychology, and then Maybe a little bit more about your strategy, like you said trend lines, yeah, uh, which is pre pretty straight straightforward, but as far as risk management, what are you doing to manage risk and what are you trading specifically? Okay, so we'll, we'll go ahead and do the whole, the whole rundown. So I trade futures. Um, I kind of specialize, I guess you could say that, in oil. I've traded oil for a really long time. Mm -hmm. um, what got me hooked to oil is there was just one month in, I think, the beginning-ish of my trading career of the futures market that... I had an incredible freaking month and it was all thanks to oil. And I was like, okay, this is amazing. Now that was, I, w I don't want to say by accident, it was still with the strategy, but I just, I hadn't done any research on the instrument. I was just kind of like, we're just going to hop on this, see if it works. Well, mm -hmm. I got a crazy amount of success and I was like, okay, I'm going to stick with oil. Oil's great. So now I've just developed like this heavy relationship with it. I feel like I am in a long-term relationship so with So you oil. mainly trade oil? Yes, for the most part. Okay. Now I do trade gold, um, some of the indexes, but oil is like my main man. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's totally different from what I do. Yeah? I just hop around between different, yeah, large cap stocks. Okay. Did, you, okay. did you say you're in a long term relationship with oil? Yes, very does, much does so. Does gold get mad when you trade oil? Uh, oil gets mad when I trade gold. Oh, sorry. <laughs> other, other way. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I see. So when I think of oil, I think of it as being, and as also gold, I think of it as being one of the most fundamentally dependent uh, futures. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's so supply and demand oriented. Yes. So like, what's your response? Because you, you are, are you solely a technical trader? Yeah. So what's now, your response to that? Yeah, like for someone think, who might okay. not understand, like, okay. You would think, I mean, absolutely you think fundamentals for sure for like oil, you absolutely need to know. Yeah. But there's been so many times where I've found that oil is completely non-reactive. Now it's, it's a hit or miss, but there are, there are many times where oil has been, oil has been very non-reactive to like news coming out. And yeah. it's very surprising because you're like, okay, you're, all the indexes are like making insane moves, but oil for some reason is non-reactive. Hmm. So it's almost like it's got that, um, con not consistency, but like, I feel like I can rely on it. If that makes, there's a word I'm looking for, it's not there. Yeah. But it's just, like I can capitalize on just regular average price movement instead of these crazy fluctuations for the okay. most part. Yeah. But technical analysis, that's, that's my thing. Um, I could look at any chart. Like, I mean, you can put anything in front of me. And mm -hmm. I don't know what it is, but I could trade it just based on the chart alone in itself. Now, the strategy that I use, so the trend lines and the support and resistance. The trend lines, I, I change the terminology for them. So I'll, let's say that I'm trading something new. I want to mark this thing up and do my research on it. So I'll start in higher time frames. Um, I will look at all data, if I can. All from day one, you know, if oil, you know, on trading view, it shows that little dinosaur icon. Yeah. That means that you're looking at, you know, day one when yeah. it first opened. So I'll start with all data. I'll just look for two simple things, an upward trend and a downward trend. And then I'll start coming in a little bit closer. So that was like, we'll say that's maybe a monthly time frame. And I'll start coming in a little bit closer and I'll do all the way, same, same exact thing, looking for upward trends and downward trends. And then I'll come all the way into like a four hour since now I'm swing trading, so I kind of stay in that four hour time frame. Yeah. And then I draw my trend lines. Now, 
when I'm drawing the trend lines real time. Are you drawing the trend lines on every time frame leading down? Yes, yes. Oh. So it almost like if you take a look at the whole picture, it almost looks like this fan, this yeah. fan of like downward or upward trend lines. Yeah. Okay. So when I get into the time frame that I'm actually trading, so that'll be the four hour. I draw my trend lines to where the price has not crossed them yet because I don't get in unless a trend has been broken or price is changing direction. So you, so you don't trade with the trend. You only trade against. You sorry. You don't trade like in. Um, you know. I try to do both. Okay. So like, let's say that whatever instrument I'm trading is trending downward. Yeah. If it breaks out of that trend, I want to get in to go. You know, long. We'll say it's it's been trending yeah. down and now we're going up. And now I want to continue with that trend. So okay. I'm essentially almost like looking for the next trend. What is, so I'm trying to be like ahead of the curve. So what do you think the edge is in, you know, finding divergences and like a reversal versus just going with the trend? Um, like fake outs and whatnot? Yeah. I would say I don't, I don't ever avoid them because I can't, I can't spot a, a fake out, break yeah. out, but I have trend lines in place that kind of protect my capital for the most part. So I have terms for them. So like upward trend lines, downward trend lines, a trend line is a trend line, but when one gets broken, so if a trend has been broken, I call it my action line. So that means I get into the market. Now I'm getting in. I'm taking action. I'm placing a position. Now, yeah. it could be upward or downward, so either one. And then the opposing trend line is going to be the one that's keeping me safe. So as long as it does truly follow along that opposing trend line, then I'm, I'm happy. I'm in yeah. the money. And when you say there's so many different ways that you can classify a break of trend line, are you looking for a close above? On what time frame? Does price just have to move above or below based if you're yeah. looking for a break? Is it just price moving or do you have to wait for a close on a certain time frame? So I think it is dependent. Now this is different for everyone. And I know there's plenty of you know trend line traders, uh, different styles of trading. But for me specifically, in the four hour time frame, I don't necessarily wait for candle to close because it's I'd have to wait four hours. Yeah. And um, I don't wait for the retest either because that could take days. So yeah. I get in upon break in a four hour time frame. Okay. But if I am trading maybe a one hour, waiting for the candle to close on the other side, absolutely all for that. Or even waiting for the retest, I recommend. Mm -hmm. But I, since I am trading the four hour time frame now, I'm, I'm and I have the confidence in my trading that I, I will get in upon break. Okay. If you guys are enjoying today's episode, we would appreciate it if you smash that like button, left a comment, and subscribe. All right. Thank you guys, and on with the episode. So from a risk management standpoint, how, how are you managing risk? So risk is going to be different for every trade. So remember I okay. said that um, I have a safety line and an action line. So when one of my trend lines is being broken, mm -hmm. that's the one where I get in. The opposing trend line, where the price is in conjunction to that opposing trend line is, I know, if we were to I'm look at something, like <laughs> I know, I'm seeing it in my head. Yeah. Wherever the price is in, a, in conjunction to the opposing trend line mm -hmm. is going to be my risk. So if the price okay. is very close to the opposing trend line, it's a low risk trade and I'm happy. I'm like, yes, let's get in, you know. My, my normal amount of contracts. But if the price is pretty far away from that opposing trend line, mm -hmm. I know this is a high risk trade. I'm either not going to take it or I'm going to get in with, you know, less contracts, one of the two. So it's, it's very dynamic, my okay. risk. Wow. All right. So from a psychological standpoint, kind of transitioning and running through everything yeah, you yeah. do. Hitting all the bases. I mean, everyone, like for someone starting out, it's like, what would be like one key thing you should implement right from the start from a psychological standpoint to put yourself on a good track um, in your trading? I would say journaling for sure, being able to see your progress yep. is huge and it could be motivating. I mean, imagine like seeing whether it's small wins or not, all in all BS. Journaling, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, I would say simulate for as long as you freaking can Yeah. because you're probably never going to go back. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's me speaking from personal experience, but I, I spent an entire year simulating when I started and yeah. that takes an incredible amount of discipline. Imagine to yeah. like not you want to put money in the market. You want to just try it and see if it works. But like spending that entire year in, you know, simulated markets, paper trading, whatever it is, mm -hmm. is going to be huge, incredibly yeah. beneficial. And then it just gets you used to the platform, used to the trades, seeing the profits, seeing the losses. So then when you actually do apply the strategy, like, you know, it like the back of your hand because you've been simulating it. So at least the strategy part won't be an issue. Mm -hmm. It'll be the psychology stuff that you have to work on. That's true. Yeah. I think people think like, you know, if you're not making money paper trading, you're not going to make money trading a live account. And if you're not making money trading with a thousand bucks, you're not going to make money trading with a hundred thousand. Exactly. Um, I skipped over the paper trading thing, and I wish I didn't because you know there's a lot of money that I lost. Yeah. But, oh yeah. Um, you know that's why we're here to teach everyone. Exactly. <laughs> uh, from a psychological standpoint, are you? I mean, I, I kind of like hearing everyone's opinions on tilt, tracking your tilt. Like, if you're, I mean, just for example, the other week I had a lot going on in my world outside of trading. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm not going to trade this week. Yeah. Are there times where you'll be like, I just need to take a, a week off. I just not, need to not trade Absolutely. because, you know, I'm going to start making emotional decisions. Yeah. Yeah. I think being incredibly self-aware, like you got to know yourself. 
Mm-hmm. And that helps in all aspects of life, obviously. Relationships, friendships, mm-hmm. trading, like being so self-aware. Understand your emotions, your own yeah. emotions. And I mean, whatever it takes to, to get to that point of being self-aware is just going to be huge. Because when I, as soon as, whether it's a profit or a loss, as soon as I start to feel strange about a trade, mm-hmm. I cut myself off. I'm like, no, you're done. Really? Yeah, absolutely. And okay. that, that'll come with like me understanding, okay, I'm, I'm trying to micromanage this freaking four hour time frame. What are you doing? Like, this is, so I can immediately see that I'm like, I'm feeling strange about this trade. I'm wanting to micromanage this position, like cutting myself off immediately. Okay. And whether that's even with like your personal life, if you've got weird stuff going on, yeah, just being so self-aware, be like, you know what? It's not going to hurt my future to just take myself like a, a week break or now there's pros and cons to it. Some people, if they take too long of a break, they've mm-hmm. almost got like that scare to get back into the market, you know? So there's yeah. got to be like a healthy, a healthy balance there. Yeah, that's true. All right. So if there's like one piece of advice, like your most valuable piece of advice you could give maybe from your uncle or you, what would it be? Mm-hmm. How would they apply it in their trading? These two. <laughs> um, I want to take, say- I want to incorporate the live audience <laughs> dude it's been so cool i've been hearing people in the audience like talking really about what we're cool. saying yeah this yeah. is so neat <laughs> well, what's one piece of advice you'd, you'd give them um i would say one thing that my uncle told me over and over and over again was don't know don't care and that was like trying to predict the future putting so much like pressure on each trade like you don't know what it's going to do you can just follow the strategy and it's going to play out or it's not so like don't know don't care i, I should get that like tatted on me don't know, don't care was like huge. Don't Just know, follow care. the strategy. Don't put so much attachment to this trade. It's mm-hmm. not going to be the big one. It's not. So just like follow the strategy and kind of remove some of that emotion that you've got towards it. Yeah. How do you keep yourself from getting attached to a trade? You know, thinking like that's that's going to be my big my big winner, and then right. you know holding it, letting it bleed out into nothing. It's exhausting. Yeah. And I've been there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I had my biggest trade. Now it may not be much, but it was my biggest trade. So it was a ten thousand dollar trade in oil, and it mm-hmm. was in March. And I, I didn't necessarily, I knew this was going to be my biggest trade because I saw that I was up that much, Mm -hmm. but I, I exhausted myself like, and because you're swing trading. So you're in a position for so long and like to see it go like up 5,000 and then back to nothing and then like negative. And then, so like, that's exhausting. Well, when we enter a trade, we don't only enter a trade because we think it's going to win. So it, it's hard to, we have to be able to adapt. True. And then say, okay, there's at some point there's going to be a period where you say, okay, this actually isn't going to win. Yeah. So it's being able to shift that mindset because we have our, you know, our egos attached to our opinions. So much so. Yeah. So yeah. break it. Yeah. I, I, agree. I agree. And, but like, like you said, when you get into that trade, you want it to work, obviously. That's yeah. why you're getting into the trade. But being very aware that, okay, if it doesn't, I know exactly how much I'm going to lose. And like, I guess just preparing yourself but I mean that's easier said than done I mean yeah. when you take a loser it's you, you can tell someone that it hurts but when they actually feel it then they know yeah exactly do you think you've um, learned more from your worst loss or your best win um oh god I think I maybe have a trauma issue where I block <laughs> out uh, things so my losses mm-hmm. hard to remember yeah. okay well, <laughs> so I would say I, I, I learned the most from from my winners because I, I really evaluate when you when you have a winner you almost want to break it now this could be to- this could be awful advice. So maybe don't take my advice. But this is me sharing my experience. Yeah. No, you're. It, it is funny because you are. Actually, everyone has said their biggest loss has been their biggest teacher. So I'm I'm interested to hear oh, okay. like why you think the biggest winner has the biggest impact. So when when you have your biggest winner, you're like you're excited about it. Emotions are high. Yeah. You almost that's the one that you want to break down and analyze and be like, yes, okay. So this is where I got in here. You, it's almost like you're boosting your own ego. You're like, yeah, I got in right there because of this. And like, so you break it down a lot more. The excitement's there. So it gets almost like just imprinted into your, it's kind of like core memories. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They, they, they stick a little bit harder than, you know, the so, okay. So you're ones. saying now when you see that same setup, the same pattern, it's so much easier it's like, to see. okay, I've, I've been there, done that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. exactly. Okay. I like that. From, okay, we've covered risk management, trading psychology. We've talked about how you trade. Are there any, like, what, what if, okay, if That's, these guys, <laughs> you, you're trying to learn how to trade, I'm assuming. <laughs> Throw some questions at us. Like, like when you were, when you were at 5,000, that, that 10,000 trade, when you were at 5,000, you saw it green, felt good, then you saw red. What went to your mind? Um, I would say just exhaustion. I mean, being in that trade for so long. So we talked about this a little bit earlier. I remember you were asking. You had excellent questions, by the way. So I, since I am making this transition from day trading to swing trading, I mean, I'm still learning through those emotions too. Like I'm, I'm learning to like, okay, 
don't be so exhausted by the time like the setup is there. Yeah, it's that's the hardest part. So like I'll I'll be in a trade for like two weeks and it'll be like in my favor against me and but I mean within my parameters still. But then maybe I'll stop loss will get hit or maybe I'll be so exhausted with that trade I'll be like this has gone nowhere I have to get out. Mm -hmm. And then by the time the setup comes around I'm already exhausted. So being self-aware, and I'm still working through that. So that's an excellent question. I don't have an answer yet. Still working through it. But I think that's with trading. Like, we're never done learning. Okay? You've been trading for eight years. I've been trading for six years. And it's, you know, constant progression. You're always learning new things and trying to develop your skills and get better. Yeah. Any that's other cool. questions? <laughs> uh, I don't know. It's just, uh, like, I've been trading for four years. Four years. Yeah. Um, actually, I'm your follower. Oh, I'm thank so you. good to see you guys here. Thank you, guys. And... <laughs> I've been trading for four years with up and downs, up and downs, and last year, uh, oh, this year, I'm trying, I'm struggling to get funded. I actually had a one, I passed one trade account, but didn't last a week. Oh, damn, damn. Okay. Like, like a hundred k account, and what you suggest to restart back again? Because somehow I think, well, I think I knew it. Everything was working good, and now it's nothing working. Oh my God! It no, I've been like, there. Like I know. I, I missed everything, and I don't know what's going on. Like, yes, I did two. I passed through two phases, and I don't know. Suddenly, everything. Dude, I think you're in a very pivotal moment right now. Like year three, year three, year four, is usually when people will either quit or they will keep going. So, you're here to stay. Okay, yeah. but that is a very pivotal moment. You're, you're second guessing everything. You're like, okay, I've made it this far. Or I've been invested this long. Like. Why am I still not there yet? I've been there. Oh my dear God. And I've been in the same shoes. I'm thinking like, okay, I'm now I'm like resentful towards the market. I'm like, every time I get in, why is it freaking going against me? Like, I don't get it. What am I doing wrong? I'm doing the same thing that I've ever done. And I think you just, it's like a speed bump. You got to get past it. You can't have resentment towards the market. You can't, you know, think that it's the market's fault, not you. So you're in a very pivotal moment right now. And I know that because I've been there. So I would just say, Continue to trade. If you've got the strategy, keep the strategy going. Maybe we're in like a weird, you know, maybe market conditions are strange for your strategy, but getting past that, there will be a time where the strategy does work and the psychology is there and things line up and add up. But you're in a very pivotal moment and I know that it's like, okay, this is make or break. So I get it. I get it. That's cool. It's so good to hear that persons that pass through. Are you going to try again? Awesome. Are you going to try again? Am I going to try again? What do you mean? Oh, to be honest, I I think I will because I do owe like the the community like my honest review at least, but I I love trading my own account. It's it's like uh, to Not have to have account. to I mean to have to like simulate trading and change my style in order to abide by these rules and these targets. It's it's hella tricky. Hella tricky. Mm -hmm. I I truly do, I mean I love trading my personal account, but I think I owe it to like my community to at least give like an honest effort to it. So I will. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. <laughs> okay. So, All right. Thank yes. you guys so much. So wait, I want to ask one last question because we asked Anthony this question and he, it was like, it was a really inspiring moment. And we asked him like, what was your lowest point? Like where was rock bottom for you in your trading journey? I would say it was a moment where um, no one was supporting me anymore. They weren't saying like, okay, you can do it. You've got this. Like communication with my uncle was like maybe at minimum, wasn't a whole lot there. Yeah. Uh, I still didn't, you know, make it profitable. I, I think, and it was probably around like that year three that I, and I kid you not, it was a day where I was like, okay, I'm done. I like bought a bunch of blazers and I was like, okay, I sent out resumes to like marketing firms and I was going to go work, you know, in like the corporate marketing term. And I was like, I, I told myself, I'm like, I'm done. And then I did interviews and I was like, oh, fuck no, no, I'm not done. I'm going to keep doing this. But that was my lowest point, And I told myself, like, I solidified it in my mind. It's like, I put out the resumes. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to do something else. Yeah. I think you almost have to hit that low point. Anthony was literally living out of his car and he had to like go do a sales job just to like get enough money to like live. Damn. Like, it's pretty crazy stuff. That's um, pretty wild. I didn't know that. It's that moment of like. When you think of giving up, and it's like it's, if they did, it would their whole lives would be very different. So How super inspiring. Wild. And I hope that like, yeah, I asked that for you, bro. Like, all right. So we're coming to an end. Do you have any words of wisdom, advice, inspirational bits you'd like to share to your audience and ours? I would say my advice um, would be, please understand that trading is like it's not a get rich quick. And maybe as as quickly as you do truly want it to work. 
Like it takes so much investment and yeah. so much time. Please understand that before you get into it. Yeah. To be honest, there's there's almost times where I don't necessarily want to recommend trading because it does take so much time and dedication and perseverance and education and yeah. knowledge. Like it's it's difficult. And understanding that when you get in will maybe give you that edge. Just yeah. the very smallest start to know that okay, this is going to be hard, but I'm going to make through it. Yeah, saying there are realistic expectations and very much so. outcome. All right, Tori, where can people find you? Um, on Instagram or YouTube or Twitter. Um, I haven't tried Twitch yet, but maybe I'll make it there. All right. Uh, Tori.trades. There are a lot of scammers out there. Make sure you get the right one, please. All right, God. guys. All right, Tori, go check out Tori, guys. Thank you so much for coming Thank on. Thank you guys for having me.